Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to segment three, third video for the Rifter number 10. And today we are going to go back, hearken back to Rifter number nine, where we looked at the territory of Arsno part one. Well, guess what? This is the territory of Arsno part two. That's right. The first part, we saw what they were all about. They love their techno wizardry. We know where they are. They're in Arizona, northern part. And now we're going to talk about the political ramifications of them being there, their friendships and, 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 and enmities with other nations and peoples. And this is going to round out the territory of Arsno for all you game masters who want to use it in your Rifts campaign. So let's start into it. For the record, I told Heathen Dog not to cover part two. I said, Heathen Dog, they can read part two on their own. You tease them with part one. He's like, no, no, no. They want the complete story. Well, I disagree. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's not so if you don't want the complete story of ours, no, click off right now. Go away. No, don't do that. Go well, away. Not, not, Max but... says, beat it. <laughs> Pound sand, you moron. That's Matt. Quote from Max. Quote from Max. Pound sand, bitch. That's what he says. That's that's what I said. And then I said after that, you should buy uh, the Rifter yourself from Drive Through RPG and give Palladium Books some money. Or donate to us on Ko-Fi, as you see on the screen right there. And pound sand. Okay. <laughs> pound sand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Diplomatic relations of the city and territory of Arsenal. Let's find out. Coalition states. Well, the coalition states don't know they exist, which is a good thing because once they do, it's going to get crappy real fast because they love their magic in Arsenal. Is it anywhere near the coalition, though? No, no, no. Not really, no. But has noticed an increase in techno wizard weaponry circulating through the population of the West and is currently trying to figure out where it's all coming from. So the coalition is sending out uh, scouts, scouting parties, to find out where these techno wizard weapons that are increasingly being flooded in, into the West are coming from. And they're coming from Arsenal. And once the the uh, coalition finds out, they're going to assess Arsno for their combat capability. And if they are under a certain line, they're just going to come and stomp them out. If they're above a certain line, well, now it's going to get all intriguey and nonsense. So that's what's going to go on here. Uh, if they find out about Arsno, it's likely they would send a team to investigate, if not destroy the city. Arsno is prepared for this, and an evacuation schedule has been put in place. Drills are held occasionally <laughs> to keep up with the readiness, but their effectiveness would depend on what kind of strike was called. So, so wait, wait. Uh, so the coalition doesn't know about you, but we know about the coalition. Yeah, everyone knows about the coalition. It's like, okay, well, everything we're doing here is bad according to them. So we have to figure out a way to get all of our, you know, non-combats men, women, and children out of here if they actually do attack. So we can not have to worry about that and defend ourselves. That's and smart. They that is smart that, that they didn't take the track is. of too far away. Exactly. No, there's no such thing as too far away. You know, when, when genocide is on the line, right? There's no such thing. Vampire kingdoms. The city is officially at war with all vampire kingdoms and employs the Arsenal mercenary Corps, which we talked about in the first part one to help protect them. This is in addition to the citizen patrollers, the local militia and police force. No outright conflict has emerged except for battles with Xavier Stewart's vampire armies. Again, I talked about that uh, in uh, Rift number nine. And all of them have been on non Arsno land. So what's going on is, yes, they consider themselves at war with all vampires everywhere. Vampires suck. That's literally and figuratively. And we want them gone. But so far, they haven't attacked the city proper. They've only had skirmishes outside the city in patrols and whatnot stuff like that but the day could easily come when some vampire master somewhere or some vampire intelligence who's actually on the planet goes you know what those are no guys they got to go and then there's going to be a war and it's coming for the city and they I'm gotta confused. be ready for that how are you confused two things one are, shouldn't everybody be at war with the vampires, whether they declare it or not? I mean, that's just natural. And then yes. two, aren't vampires inherently at war with everybody? No. no? Yes, yes, number one, and no, number two. But the reason why uh, Arsno has declared war on all vampire kingdoms everywhere is because 
the most of the people of the city of Arzno either are from or descended from people who are from the the south near the Mexican border where vampire problems are everywhere. Okay. So this is a generational thing. Like we hate vampires from like way back. So it's deep seated, like Crips versus blood level enmity be between Arzno and vampires. But yes, everyone should hate them, but they hate them more because everyone has a relative that was either turned or killed by a vampire in Arzno. And what was the, what was the second one? Well, it was just both ways. I just kind of, uh, my understanding is oh, that oh, everybody should be oh. at war against vampires. And vampires, vampires should be at war should... with everyone else. Yeah. Vampires uh, in, uh, in rifts are smart. They know that they have to keep humans around for food. So they have slave villages. They don't hate humans. You can't hate your the, the cow, right? You don't hate the cow. You don't hate the chicken. You don't hate the pig. They're just food. You take care of them. You keep them caged up so they don't, go about their own devices. You do kill them, but you don't hate them. You're not at war with humans. You're just collecting more, more, you know, stock. Right. I mean, think of it that way. That's fair. Yeah. Tolkien, Laszlo and the magic zone in general. Uh, word has reached the magic zone about exceptional techno weapon, weaponry, techno wizard weaponry from the Southwest. Uh, models of such items are the TWW 1100 light blade. We're going to worry. We're going to, you know, we're going to be with that and series of techno wizard batteries, which are now a real thing. But back, back in this time, when this rifter came out, it was just, it was introduced in rifter number seven or eight or something like that. The techno wizard battery. So, you know, that started in the rifter, but now it's canon. If they find out, they will undoubtedly send representatives to Arsenal in order to set up trade relations. Arzno is too far away to be a direct threat to business and has a better chance of increasing businesses. Tolkien and Laszlo will eventually find out about the city and may petition them to help against the CS. Whether or not Arzno can be of any help is yet to be seen because, you know, they're they're not as fully established as the other cities, as, as Tolkien, Laszlo, and um, the, the Federation of Magic, you know, in, in general. You know, they, uh, they're, they're, they're not as big and strong. So can they really help significantly? Maybe, maybe not. Don't know. Uh, they don't really care about ours, no, and the feeling is more or less mutual. For most of the people in the magic zone, which is in the, the breadbasket type area of the U.S., uh, that, that's where there are the most ley lines and the most nexus points. And most people who live there have their own thing to worry about and don't really care about what's going on in the Southwest. They don't really care. That's nice. The Brotherhood of Silver and Water. Sounds stupid. Until you realize that vampires are allergic to both. This vampire hunter guild is based in Arzno and has wonderful relations with the city and the businesses that thrive there. About 60% of the members of the AMC are members of the Brotherhood, including many officers. AMC is the Arzno uh, Mercenary Company, which is their standing uh, fighting force. Colorado Baronies. Arzno has made no contact with the political bodies of the Colorado Baronies, but is aware that they exist. If Arzno was to learn of the vampires so near them to the north, they would immediately begin a campaign of extermination, probably by finding outside assistance, possibly demon busters or similar mobile organizations, and subcontracting. Ramirez is aware of Arzno and is taking care not to excite them or Xavier for that matter. Okay, so uh, in, in, in the New West... There, there, there are secret vampire organizations that are north of Mexico, like in the U.S. proper, like in the middle of the U.S. and higher. And uh, Arsenal doesn't know about them. But once they do, oh, man, no, we can't have a vampire enemy on both sides. That's not working out. So they will immediately attack all the vampires in the north to exterminate them. They will hire anyone. Everyone and their grandma will get paid to kill vampires that day. The Golden Ones. I don't even know who these people are. The city of Arzno has a peace treaty with the Lin Srial and respects their claim to the Grand Canyon. The two have many mutual enemies and have found that they get along nicely. Citizens of Arzno frequent the glorious city of, of Lin Srial and there are several of the Golden Ones living in and fighting for Arzno. Great. Good for you. Other territories, such as Clarkdale, Hope, and others, partners in commerce, but little else. So, mainly Arzno is a trading hub of 
magical items, techno techno wizard weapons in specifically, but magical items in general. And they're very good at it. And so they get along with all of the non-power hungry people in their area. Which is fine. Then we have techno wizard armor. This is uh, armor that is built and used almost exclusively by the people of Arsno. When outfitted by a skilled techno wizard, a suit of run of the mill body armor can become comparable to even the most sophisticated power armor. This is true. When built from the ground up, construction of the armor, modification, and add ons, a suit of magical armor can turn any soldier into a walking powerhouse. Naturally, there are costs to such sophistications <laughs> in the melding of magic and technology. For one thing, techno wizard. Techno wizardry is expensive and armor is no exception. The suit of techno wizard armor has no extraordinary features and is only roughly equivalent to mundane suit of body armor. It will cost twice to three times the black market cost of a regular suit. This is due to the massive overhead needed to hand construct a single piece of armor. And some of these armor are uh, uh, not even very seemingly effective. Like here, military grade armor. Military grade armor is a standard for all Arsno mercenaries as listed here. This grade makes up 90% of the TW armor purchases. It is notable fact that these features are also the most common given the armor to all techno wizards, not just those employed by Arsno. A minimum of 30 MDC. So minimum plastic man. An insulation system protecting from heat and cold to... Uh, 392 degrees Fahrenheit to negative 103. That's basically all earth temperature. You are protected from all earth temperatures. And then some. Polarized helmet. A face plate with the visor with removal. A PPE battery to power the armor if you yourself are not a spellcaster or psionic. Uh, a simple Insert one frequent... baby per week. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you just have, have your buddy who is a spellcaster charge it up once in a while and you're good to go. Uh, a 10 frequency radio and scrambler. Okay. All military grade armor is not radiation shielded, environmental, suitable for hostile environments such as underwater because it's not fully environmental, doesn't have its own known oxygen supply, or with any special optic equipment. So no zoom or macro or whatever. Civilian grade armor is minimum of 20 MDC, insulation from negative 25 to 150 degrees centigrade, negative 13 to 320 Fahrenheit. So most heat ever on the planet, but there are lots of places that are cold enough to bother you in this armor. You have a regular 10 frequency radio that is not uh, scrambled in any way, but it is not, of course, environmental, radiation shielded, or uh, underwater capable in any way. Communications package offered with all TW armor for Arsenal is simple, easy to use, and roughly identical to those used in other manufactured armor suits. Okay, well, what are they? That's it. It's just regular radio. The 10 frequency radio or 10 frequency radio with a scrambler, it's it's the same as the technological version. Yeah, it's, it's, I think that's just in there to say, hey, it's nothing special, and it yeah. can integrate with anything. Yeah, mundane option. Every once in a while, someone comes along who wants to buy armor without Techno Wizard features. For whatever reason they may have, Arsno is happy to oblige, though they would never offer mundane armor to their mass market. So you can get this stuff without, you know, magical supplements in it, but why? Just buy regular armor. I don't, I don't understand. Just buy regular armor. You're stupid. The PPE battery is the lifeblood of this system for non-casters and non-psionics. It is a vital system, these magical suits. It allows mages to use the TW items without having to worry about their own PPE reserve. It also makes this technology available to common people. Now, how much power does it have? Uh, let's see here. Uh, in the process of activating and deactivating various techno wizard features in the armor, those who are not mages or psychic require a physical anchor to use them, usually in the form of a switch. So you have to, you know, switch out you know, turn on the power to that, to that specific thing. Like if you have armor that has a battery and a spell armor of Ithan attached to it, you have to turn a switch and it will turn on the armor. Great. Good for you. Then turn it off when you're done. Awesome. Mages and psychics have the advantage of being able to activate and deactivate features with a mere thought. This doesn't take in, uh, does take an attack and can really make difference in a tense fight. Uh, in combat, turning on and off 
techno wizard armor devices when you're a mundane takes an action. It's kind of like reloading a clip, you know, takes an action. But if you are already magic or already techno wizard, you can just think it and it'll happen, which is awesome. There is an environmental option. You can make them environmentally sound. It'll be an extra 15, 2000 credits at a legitimate establishment or 7,000 credits, you know, in the black market or in CS to use territories to use 15 PPE is subtracted from the battery upon activating the armor. And the feature runs for three hours after each additional three hours, 15 more PPE is taken from the battery until you turn it off or until it's gone. And that's full environmental. That means underwater. That means a toxic environment, radiation, whatever doesn't matter. You're good for three hours per 15 PPE spent. I missed uh, how much, what is the maximum the battery can hold? I believe we're going to get in, into the, the different size batteries later. Oh, okay. For some reason, I'm like, I thought I missed it. All right. No, no, I, I thought we missed it too, but it's not sure. All right. Uh, package add on. Oh, here's the radiation. I'm sorry. I meant toxic environment as in gases and stuff like that. But to get radiation shielding uh, requires the spells energy bolt and impervious to energy, blah, 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 cast on the armor to use five PPE in addition to whatever else from the above is taken from the battery. And it is, doesn't say how long it lasts. That's weird. It should say the duration. I don't see it. Oh, no, it doesn't say duration because it has to be an add-on to the full environmental package. So it's 15 plus 5. It's 20 per 3 hours instead of 15. The oh, I got it. Okay, okay. Itself. It's an add-on to your existing environmental package. So it lasts as long as the environmental package, which is 3 hours. Okay, good. And there's alternate construction. We don't need to go into that. Techno wizard equipment. Techno wizard imitator armor. Well, what is that? Let's see. It's updated. The imitator is the, what's that? Updated in italics. Exactly. The imitator is a unique and rare suit of armor capable. Okay. Unique and rare. Shut up. It is very stylish, customizable, and popular with techno wizards or any characters that like having a certain zing. Many officers in the Arsno Mercenary Corps, including Gara, the head of the Techno Wizards, excuse me, uh, own these unique suits of armor. Well, what do they do? MDC 40. Uh, not blowing up my skirt right now. PPE battery of 50 PPE that recharges two per hour normally. Oh my God, these things recharge on their own. I forgot about that. These things recharge two points per hour, 10 points per melee if you're on a ley line. Or I imagine a nexus point. That's crazy. You don't even have to have a friend to recharge it for. You just got to not use it for a day. Okay. Two per hour. So that's one day. You've got 24 hours. That's 48 PPE you've regenerated. That's almost the entire battery. One day of not using it. And you're good to go. That's bananas. Absolutely bananas. This armor uses a unique combination of spells at conception to allow it to give the user certain abilities. This armor is made in seven styles. Eagle, Rhino, Cheetah, Serpent, whatever. Uh, Skeleton! There you go. Each has its own set of power spells and resembles the animal creature it emulates. Oh, that's why it's so special is because you, I have the, the Eagle armor, the Serpent armor, the Rhino armor, the Cheetah armor, and it has certain abilities it brings to the table. And there's there's also oh my god there's vampire armor, seriously. Despite its somewhat frightening appearance, resembling a black and gray corpse, this suit of armor is very useful in combating a great number of different foes. This armor is sometimes used by the AMC to infiltrate areas otherwise unavailable to many soldiers and heroes. And it, an added bonus is the offensive capabilities of the mental blast. Eliminating the need to carry a weapon. Okay, so the vampire armor gives you these special abilities. Aura of death. Protects the wearer from sensors and projects an illusion of decay and death. So <laughs> not only do, do people not see you, when they do see you, they don't want to be around you. Okay. Mental blast. 5d6 damage plus disorientation penalties. 15 PPE. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Cloak of Darkness. The wearer is shrouded in darkness and is nearly invisible at night. Those outside of five foot radius of them, of uh, whoever's wearing the armor, 
and unaided by thermal optics are minus three to hit. Okay. And there's angel armor. Angel armor costs an extra 150,000 credits because, you know, it has double the PPE. So instead of 50 PPE on the battery, it has 100. What can it do? It has an off factor of 16. I want to impress someone. Toggle that switch. Greater healing. Oh my God. Heals 2d4 times 10 SDC, 66 hit points, or 1d4 MDC on each activation. And each activation costs 30 PPE. Did you see that, that is... note though? What's in a, oh, can't be used on the suit's wearer. Oh, it doesn't matter. 2d4 times 10 SDC healing somebody else. That's awesome. You're the in angel wrist. of life. Oh, to a regular village? Oh my God. You're, 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 you're really an angel. Winged flight. Okay. Hour and 40 minute duration costs 35 PPE. The MDC is 60 for the, for the wings. I imagine. PPE to activate is 10, duration 20. Oh, armor of Ithin. Armor of Ithin. So it's armor on top of that. Okay. So what's the normal armor? It doesn't say. Okay. Let's just say it's 60. Fine. Screw it. Let's say the armor of Ithin, uh, 10 PPE to activate, last 24 hours. And the, th the, th the thing about this is you can activate it again when you're getting low and it just goes back up to 60. So it all depends on how much PPE you have. You can just keep armor going up. And there's the hypo spray, a device used to give medication. Uh, effect varies. Of course, it varies because, you know, medication. Um, TM, TWM 100 series magical agents. Oh, activated. Oh, they, these are the stuff you put into the hypo spray. Uh, negate poison, cure minor disorder, heal wounds, cure illness. This is basically a, a Star Trek hypo spray. Whatever. Oh, what do, you, what, do you, what do you got? Okay, I'll put this thing in it. Okay, you're fine. That's basically it. That's pretty good. I'd buy that. Climbing claws. Okay. These climbing claws are designed to help the user scale all types of surfaces, even those normally unclimbable, such as smooth buildings or glass. Okay. Cool. Last 25 minutes. Temporarily gives the user climbing skill of 98% for climbable surfaces and 60% for unclimbable surfaces. That's pretty good. I can get that. Yeah. I can get that. That's, that's nice. I can. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Uh, two PPE or four ISP. Sure. And we got this guy here, this hover vehicle. That's something. Here, let me zoom out a little bit. That's kind of a, I don't know. It's it's not sexy, but I'm sure it's it's very efficient. <laughs> it's called the Sandstorm Hovercraft. Well, wouldn't every hovercraft every in a desert be a sandstorm? Well, I guess that's why they call it the Sandstorm, because it creates a sandstorm, right? There you go. Uh, one pilot, one coal pile or gunner. Uh, let's see... Uh, main body, 80 MDC. Okay, it's not a combat vehicle. It has a force field of 100. That's nice. So it's 180 MDC total. Good, 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 good. But it is definitely not a hardcore combat vehicle. So what you're saying right. is one boom gun could take it out in one shot. Yes, but, you know, don't get hit by a boom gun and you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it has a PPE battery for 100 points. And that's good enough to take it 250 miles. And an additional 80 points for the weapon functions. Recharges at ley lines at 10 per round, but 10, 10 per melee and elsewhere for two points per hour. So like, like all batteries, it regenerates two per hour. And you can go 250 miles on a full charge. But it'll take you two days to refill to go another 250 miles. So unless you're on or around a ley line, it's not really gas efficient. It's like a modern are, electric car. <laughs> yeah. But if you are on a ley line, you can go forever. You can go forever. It's fine. Uh, it's got some regular weapons, anti-vampire assault weapons. It's a multi-function shotgun. You can load it with silver rounds or conventional rounds. Mini missile launcher. And uh, it has the armor of Vithin. 
for 100 MDC, and you can keep reactivating that, burning away the 80 points battery for the weapon systems. And we got a personal helicopter. Now, this one do not take into battle. I'm going to show you a picture of it before we get into it. I'm going to show you a picture. This is not something that you want to take into battle. This is... This is... Look, this is the it's cockpit. A, it's a personal helicopter. It is a personal helicopter. It is It is not for combat in any way. It's, but it's got gun on it. No, no. That's for shooting womp rats, Luke. That's not for actually going into <laughs> combat. All right? Do not do not take this glass cage into combat with you. You're an idiot. This is for like joyriding or whatever. You can't even carry stuff with this thing. There's no there's no cargo space in this. This is just for fun. This is a helicopter for fun. That's it. Uh, da, 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 da. The this is the this is the gunship chopper. This is this is not fun. This is for combat. This is for fighting. All right. This weapon's for fighting. Uh, one pilot, one co-pilot gunner com, optional door gunner, and four soldiers or two power armor troopers can be moved about. Magic force field of 200 MDC. That's the armor of Ithin. Uh, main body's 90. Remember, these these are non-like Robotech mechs. Okay, Th These are like... Uh, helicopters and and regular cars and jets and stuff that were upgraded to mega damage so they're not going to be like 450 mega damage it's not going to happen yeah, these aren't coalition war machines these are private vehicles that have been up armored so to speak exactly right so come on it's not going to happen uh techno wizard power system uh 10 ppe or 20 isp will last for 20 minutes the chopper can fly indefinitely on a ley line the battery holds 100 ppe just over three hours Recharges the ley line at uh, 10 per melee round or two per hour, if not on a ley line or nexus point. So again, if you're around a ley line, this thing will be in the air forever. You can actually have like a crystal palace type thing going on where, where you never have to touch the ground. So I, I know that people who follow riffs probably understand, actually not probably, they do understand what's going on, but just in case we get viewers that are outside that techno wizardry items. These, these aren't just your regular helicopter. This is a helicopter that has been upgraded by a techno wizard to be both magical and scientific. That's the whole point of techno wizardry, why it's right. called techno wizardry. So that's why it has magical armor on it. That's why I can fly on ley lines because it is literally it, both. Yeah. Th think of it this way. Think of it this way. It is a machine, but instead of being powered by gas, electricity, diesel, nuclear, whatever, it's powered by magic. And you're good. That's all you got to wrap your head around and you're fine. Then we have the, the kamikaze fighter plane. Why they call it kamikaze? <laughs> I don't know. I would not call a plane. I'm going to get into kamikaze, but it does look a little bit like a zero. I mean, the wings aren't long enough, but it, you don't need wings. You're using magic. Oh, hold on. What, what's the name of the helicopter and the, and the hover tank again or hovercraft? Uh, the Hilla, the, the, this one. Yeah, both of uh, all, all. Yeah, what are the name of all these, the, including the hovercraft? The Whirly Bird. Okay. The Whirly Bird personal helicopter and the Sandstorm. So, okay, Sandstorm, Whirly Bird, and then what was the other helicopter? The smiley. Uh, smiley Chopper gunship because it looks yeah, like okay. it's smiley. Okay, I, I thought I saw a theme there because because uh, Kamikaze means divine wind. So I thought that there was a theme for that, that but no, there really that wasn't. That could be it, right? That could, but still, I don't want to get in a plane that that's called Kamikaze. I don't want to do that. <laughs> That's just me, drink your socket get in there let's go no i'm good thanks man <laughs> i'm good uh it has it holds enough battery for three hours of flight and of course if you're flying over or around a ley line you can stay in indefinitely stay in the air indefinitely it's fine and uh the weapon mage occ this one is uh is an occ specifically for arsno these these this is why their techno wizard weapons and devices are so good because they have their own occ here that does specialty work i don't need to get into a lot of it they just special skills of blacksmithing read and write recognizing runes forge magical weapons um is it uh, decent for a normal character or is that pretty much an npc it's it's an npc class it's a okay. it's a definite support class i mean if you if you make yourself a bunch of weapons you can probably get by being a player character but usually un unless you love spending out of game time hours and hours and hours of of, of, <laughs> of time 
you know, making stuff, then you probably don't want to use this. And then they have a bunch of hook, line, and sinkers. Uh, these are these are uh, unfleshed out adventure ideas using Arsno as the backdrop. And there's uh, about three or four of them. No, nope, more like five or six. Yeah, and one of them, of course, the last one is CS Troubles because that's inevitable. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. But don't start, if, if you are a game master and you're thinking, hey, I want to I want to bring the city of Arsno to the New West. Number one, don't use the New West book. It sucks. Just, just <laughs> use the area. Uh, number two, do not bring the coalition in quickly. This is middle of the campaign type stuff, right? At 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 most, at earliest, middle. I mean, of the it just campaign. doesn't make sense for how the map is developed either. Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't want the CS right away. You want to do other stuff. You want you vampires before coalition, right? Yeah. If you're making this a campaign, vampires happen first. We need to defeat the vampires. Awesome. Good on you. Great day. And then the CS comes around. Then do that. But hey, that is it. That is Arsno, part one and part two, both done. And what I like about this, even if you don't use Arsno as a backdrop, as a setting, you can use the the uh, the the techno wizard stuff as ideas, mm -hmm. or just sell them sell them in other places. You know, the black market because Ar Arsno exports these things for money, which means they're going to be sold somewhere else. Well, guess where your characters are? They're somewhere else. All right. All right what do we um, got for comments? Apparently, all of this was added to the Arsno World Book. Great. You can get the Rifter and the Arsno World Book. There you go. Get the twofer. Uh, I forget what this is. Oh, this is for... Um, Crap. 24 melees. Oh, this is for the regeneration. 24 melees. Yeah, yeah it was for the armor of Ithan, I think it was. I is want it? to say it was for the helicopter, but I could I All might right, be let wrong. Me, let me look. Let me look. Or oh, the angel armor, uh, I meant. The angel armor. Okay, yeah, the angel armor is different. Angel baby. Angel baby. Uh that's climbing claws. Here we go. Armor of Ithan. 24 melees duration 24 melees okay you're right yep 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 i thought it was hours yeah i said hours i'm sorry you are you are correct it's 24 melees duration and a melee is what 15 seconds 15 seconds so divide by four it's six, six minutes. minutes six minutes and it costs 10 ppe to activate and you have 100 and 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 if you are a, a wizard or a psychic who's wearing the armor you also have your own personal you know, PPE and ISP you can use. So there's that as well. In a resource poor world where gas stations are on every corner, just chilling for a few days, knowing it'll recharge is actually pretty awesome. I disagree. Yes. No, no, no I, I completely agree. I completely agree. It, especially if overland travel is so long, like it is in rifts, there's no highways, there's no byways. Mm -hmm. If, 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 if you don't have a, a flying vehicle, it's going to take you a week sometimes to go 50 miles. Maybe because it's it's a lot of dense forest in, in rifts, right? It's a lot of forested area. So it's going to take you a long time to go a short way. And you may not run across a, a ley line in that in that time or all the or the whole time or whatever. Just being able to camp for a day and then keep going. Nope. And not have to worry about re recharging. I think it's good. I'm never going to be in a situation where, well, I can't leave because we're out of battery. I will only, if I have to, I'll only drive that thing half of its of its range then, which means, I mean, to be fair, you're probably not going that far anyway, but no, I'm not waiting a day or two for to be stuck somewhere. Uh-uh. Not, not in a world like Rifts. DBs can pop anywhere. Vampires can show up anywhere. Coalition can come floating around. You got those banditos and all that other stuff. Nope. There will never be a, an, a, a moment where that thing is on E or even close to E. I get it. I get it. But also take take into account it's 100 ppe and it all you gotta do is is hire a, a magic guy to take the trip with you and you're like hey top me off and then he can meditate there. and gain back <laughs> 10 an hour in the back while you're driving so that means after five hours he can dump 50 more in 
five hours, dump 50 more in. You're never stopping. That's a good A deal. lot of ifs there. <laughs> just saying. Well, you just don't let him out of the cab. You're like, no, you stay in here. You, you're my gas tank. You got to be safe. And then he levitates me and slams me into the ground. <laughs> well, he also wants to get to where you're going, I imagine, as well. Could so be. don't kill the driver. I mean, I, I get the concept. I'm just saying that, mm, I mean, to be, and also to be fair, who goes 250 miles in the Rift's world, you know? <laughs> I like yeah. that. 250 miles is a long, long way in Rift's world. And hey, you know what? In our world, that's what? Four hours? Well, three hours. You were you more hours? than, yeah, you were more than 250 miles from me. Um, I mean, I drove back and forth well, to your you're, place you're, multiple you're times. You're going 70 miles an hour. That's three hours and some change. You're going mm -hmm. 250 miles right? Three hours and some change. But in Riff's world, that's weeks, maybe. Yeah, That's a long time. There's no roads, man. There's no going 60 miles an hour if you have a wheeled vehicle. Yeah, like and I said, my only other... issue is that I would never ever, oh, it's going to take a couple days to recharge. Nope. Then we are only going a third of the distance because I will never ever be in a situation where I, I can't start it up and go. That, that's that's Fair the enough. point that I'm making. but uh, And then, yeah, yeah, personal helicopters for scouting out the area. Yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. Why it has a gun on it, like, like I said, it's for womp rats. That's that's basically it. It's for it's for target practice, you know, shooting dinner from the sky. You know, and it's, a, it's a general deterrent. Sure. And you're not going to stop an army, but, you know, a general deterrent. So, you know what? That thing's got a gun on it. I don't want to mess with it. Already. You, you, you know, that whole saying was, you know, don't don't throw rocks if you live in a glass house. Yeah. Well, don't fire a gun if you're flying in a glass tube, which is what that thing is. It's a glass tube. Don't do that. Not a good plan. All right. Well, those are the comments. Uh, I want to remind folks that on November 3rd, Kevin and Sean will be back for Gamer Talk number two, where we're going to talk about magic, maybe even get into some techno magic and ley lines and, and fun things like that. Uh, Got any questions, comments, concerns for them regarding magic, psionics, and supernatural abilities across the Palladium Megaverse? You can post it on our Discord. I might read the comments related to that on this video. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. But uh, they're good. The well, the best place is to uh, post it on, on the Discord. And also, this video comes uh, pops on a Friday. And if you're still watching, which you should be, that means tomorrow, uh, the first first two of the four video series uh, where Kevin was on last Friday's uh, how to run a Halloween one-shot panel on the some random RPG live stream that I host on Fridays. He was on there giving his tips and tricks for how to run a Halloween one-shot. We're coming up on Halloween. You may want to get some of those pointers, really good pointers, really good discussion. Entire, the entire panel was great. So check that out. Uh, if you're watching, if this video just popped, you'll see it tomorrow. If not, it pops on Saturday and you should find that on our channel. So I okay, should uh, that entire we, time. I should go on. Michael had a, had a good comment here. The uh, whirly birds gun makes sense. If you're shooting oh, at yeah. NBC critters like dinosaurs that can't shoot back, but are a threat to the settlement. That is good. You, you have a couple yep. of these uh, personal choppers go up and you, you've got a stampede of dinosaurs coming toward the settlement and you can, shoot a couple of them try and divert the whole herd yep i'm about it you're absolutely right okay i take it back it is it is combat effective for very specific types of combat where they the enemy can't shoot back my but dinosaurs spit effective. fire <laughs> very effective <laughs> And with that, please like, subscribe, and share. Leave us a comment. Uh, always appreciate those. Tell us what you think, even if it is just a fist and an American flag. <laughs> uh, we have a guy who does that. But uh, yeah, leave us a comment. Tell us what you think about this. Is there a Palladium book you want us to cover? You might want to check our catalog. Make sure we haven't already. But uh, if there's one out there you want us to cover, let us know. Other than that, Heathen Dog won't be here next week. It would be just be me. And the week after, he is covering a game from the Red Room. I forget the name of it right now, but yeah, doesn't matter. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll so you'll see that in a couple weeks. So our next riffs topic isn't going to be for what three weeks now. Oh no! Oh no! But, uh, hope to see you then. <laughs>